This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure when we go out to the other coast of the United States and spend a few moments with our old friend Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Bubbles. Yes, <laughs> we're on. We're uh, we cover both coasts on this show. So. We cover both coasts. Yes, and uh, how are you doing? Well, a uh, little. You know, I get very upset uh, if Ray Liotta died, who was like a couple of years younger than me. So anytime somebody dies that's younger than you, it's a little... Well, uh, get used to it, because everybody who dies is younger than me. So, you know, it's... <laughs> yeah, it, it, I know that that it can get very depressing, because I always compare it against me. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the end of the week, we watch Sunday morning on CBS, and then they always run the obituaries from that week, right? And you see these time things go by, and you see 73, 81, and you keep waiting for, come on, give me, give me 100. Come on, <laughs> come on, give me 100. You know, and you're watching all these people that have died uh, who were much younger than you were. So, yeah, I guess I am... Can, I can say this, I think, with a great uh, uh, authority. I'm living on borrowed time. Yeah, but you're, uh, what's the, uh, I saw it recently, the average life expectancy for an American male, I think, is 78. I think it used to be like 70 when I was growing up. It was 74, I think. So yeah, it has yeah. gone up, you know. Mm-hmm. But the average is seventy-eight. That's the average. There are there are people who die less than that, and there are people who die more than that. So uh-huh. you know, I guess I'm on the more side now. You know, so I, I, I but I, but I look, I look at the uh, death of Ray Liotta, and I go, wow, he, he, well, he was really young. How old was he? Was in his sixties? He was born in fifty-four, so he was about 60, 68, Yeah. Yeah, I mean uh, that's. He had a few good years left. He had at least another 10 years by actuary statistics. Yeah, and he looked like a fairly healthy. They said he died in his sleep. I don't know what happened. Well, you know, probably had a bad dream. I don't know. <laughs> they always say these people died in their sleep. And the, here's one I love. He died of natural causes. Well, dying is natural. Yeah. It's just a question of how you die. So you had cancer. All right. So they, then they say, "Well, he died of cancer," but they, what's natural causes? Yeah, humans are so violent. I think murder would be a natural cause. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I never can figure out what an. It, isn't this wonderful, folks? This is the kind yeah. of of uplifting, life affirming programming. <laughs> That I do well, when I well, talk a lifelong to... obsession, but if well, you die, people always say if you die in your sleep, that must be the best way to go. And I bet you probably have like some horrible nightmare or something. Well, I, I think about that and I go, "What? You didn't know you died?" Yeah, you know. I mean, I I, I really have no idea. You know what scared me? I don't know if you've heard this little statistic that uh, uh, when you uh, oh I just got a, a thing that some producer for for uh, uh, Seinfeld died it says here Seinfeld producer dead at 91 oh well that's okay I'll I'll live with that who was it? <laughs> yeah who, who was it who was it I'm trying to I'm trying to look it up here uh, it was uh, George Shapiro Oh, Shapiro West. Yeah, he was the... Uh, was he his agent, I think? I think he was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was his agent, so... Eh, well, I didn't know he was that old. 90, 91. Eh, you know, I mean, if I live to be 91, I'll be happy, you know? Cause I if think I, had, I read he got $120 million on the syndication money. $120 million? Yeah. Uh, that's okay. 
you know, Jerry's almost a billionaire. Yeah, he is. And uh, there's some guy that died, I think it was last year, an NBC executive that was the guy that was responsible for keeping that show on the air when it really was on the verge of being canceled. So somebody owes him a big favor, or they did. A big favor, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but probably he goes, I didn't get any of that money. You know. I'm sure, uh, yeah. Uh, we have Larry David, who's part of that equation, but he is not close to a billionaire because he got, he got divorced. And his she, wife, Yeah, she got half of that, I read. So. Really, half? Yeah, well, that's a woman I don't, half. Well, I, I, she married him while he was doing Seinfeld. So the question could be, does she deserve half? You know, these people say, oh, well, it's community property and the, uh, California is 50 50. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. But if, it, if it's from the time that the person started making a lot of money, like if, uh, if Larry David could show that the majority of his money started coming in as a result of Seinfeld and that Seinfeld was started before they were married, then she is really not supposed to get 50% of that. But maybe he just maybe he just wanted her to shut up. I think so. Someone said, like, if you've got $500 million, does it really matter? <laughs> Do you know who he married? Do you know who Lori David was? I uh, know. Oh, you should have. She was a, uh, she was a, uh, a, a, what do you call it, an intern at the Letterman Show. Really? Wow. That's where he met her. Yeah. Well, she did well. Oh, she did very <laughs> well. She did very well. Absolutely. But, you know, I mean, let me put it this way. The amount of money that Larry David made off of Seinfeld, if he gave away 50% of it, he would still be a very rich person. Exactly. Yeah, so okay. It didn't really hurt him. So it doesn't really hurt him. Seinfeld, on the other hand, I think, he, he, stay, he stayed married all the time, and even if he if he got divorced now, she wouldn't be due any of that money, because they weren't you know they weren't married when he became successful. In fact, I think they married after the show was over with. So another but, reason not to get married. But she gets all that that good uh, comedians and cards getting coffee money. Yeah, he got that was he got pretty good money for that. I think he got thirty million for those. Did he? Yeah. Oh wow! 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 Huh. That, seem, that doesn't seem like much when you've got eight hundred million from the syndication. Well, I was thinking, anybody want to buy GabNet? You know, <laughs> yeah. the starting price because it's a great name. Okay, it's a great name, GabNet. It is. Net. Yeah. It, you know, if you have a talk outfit, it could be good for you, right? Mm -hmm. So a uh, hundred thousand dollars, the name is yours. Okay, anybody's listening. That's a bargain. It's a bargain. I'm. It's a. It's a going out of business sale. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So and I need the money. I need the money. Now ask me why. I need the why? money. Because our air conditioner broke. Oh. It was the first really hot night of the year. And Marjorie goes, and she I got to have the air conditioning on. I could live without it, but she, oh, I got to have the air conditioning on. So uh, we turn on the air conditioner, and I uh, this morning I'm hearing it making noises, <laughs> and it's not working. You know, uh, it it you know it it kind of starts up, but then there's no fan, and it's all it's. So I had to order a new air conditioner. This one I bought for two hundred and fifty dollars, I think, and now I I had to I was was going to buy it at Amazon for three hundred and oh, I think eighty nine dollars or something because the price has gone up, and uh, then I looked and I couldn't get it till next week. It wouldn't come till like next at the earliest next Wednesday. Mm. All right. And it could become a, almost a week later than that was the outside date on it. And I went, well, you know, it's going to be hot in the next couple of... We need an air conditioner. Yeah. So I went over to Best Buy, and they can deliver it by Friday. So Take it. <laughs> so I take it. And then I hire my, my uh, uh, what do you call it, my super to come in, install it, haul the old one away, and give them 100 bucks for it, you know. 
I need I need money. So a hundred thousand dollars, hundred million dollars. No, what what did I say? A uh, hundred thousand. A oh, hundred thousand. You get the name Gabnet. Okay. And and you know the website if you want it. You know, it's okay. Uh, and you get bubs, by the way, in that bargain. You get bubs. Yeah, the, a, yes, we throw that thrown in as a bonus. You get the entire catalog of bubs interviews. <laughs> Catalog. Which, by the way, I was looking at it the other day, and I don't know. Let me let me look here a second. I'll tell you. I'll tell you when it. Uh, uh, let me see here. Senator Video. Is that where it is? Guests. Come here. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, guests. Here we go. There's Bubs. Uh, you started the first time we ever did a Bubs. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute, it just says Durst and Kravitz. It doesn't have bubs here. Oh, that's audio. It's audio. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I have to go back and figure it out. But we've, we've been doing this since when? You're good at the dates. When did we start doing this? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not good on short-term memory. I would think it's been probably four years, but I could four be totally years. wrong. And that's, that's Actually, let's see. I remember we were definitely doing it in 2016. Okay, so let's say it's four years. Six, that'd be six. Six years. Okay. Yeah. Six times um, um, uh, um, uh, 52. Yeah, it's uh, over 300. Over 300? Jesus. Wow. I've got them all saved somewhere here. Yeah. And you got that big. You got your radio uh, tapes out in Petaluma, right? Uh, I'm not in Petaluma anymore. They're in uh, Santa Rosa now. I moved to a better neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. I, and I have I, actually. I have the tapes here. Most of them. Most of them are here. I had them send them out to me. Uh, and so I, uh, you know, I'm I'm sure I have a lot of tapes with you on them. How many years? Yeah, I'd love to hear those. Well, how many years do we do that show? Well, I did it for three with you. So that's five days a week. That was uh, 150. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so five days a week. So that was 250 a year. So that'd be 750. Well, I'm here to announce this is, it's through, we're over with now. I'm through with this, Bubs. I, I don't want to ever talk to you ever again. <laughs> okay. There's nothing left to say. I don't want to talk to you ever again. And uh, I, was, I was talking to Slayton the other day. You know, he he is just quit the business. That's it. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's, that's it. A shame. Well, I told him. I said, you know, it's like finding out Yasha Heifetz isn't going to play the violin anymore. You know, and he said, well, I never liked Yasha Heifetz. <laughs> anyway, uh, Yasha Heifetz. In case nobody knows who I'm talking about, was probably the greatest violinist of all time. All right. Right. Um, but it's kind of like hearing about, a, I said, like a virtuoso who decides he's not going to pick up his instrument anymore. And how disheartening that really is, you know? Well, is, was he upset about it? Was he upset? I yeah. asked him if he was bothered by it, and he said, you know, it's kind of like he said, you said something to me, I said in an interview to him, that I had been forced into retirement. And he said, I thought about it, and I, I, I've been forced into retirement. He said, "You know, I try. I try to get gigs at places I used to get gigs at, and it's very hard to get a, an opening there." He says, "The San, Fr San Francisco, the Punchline, right? A club." Uh -huh. He said, "Which I literally helped make, all right." And and I agree with him on that. Uh, uh, he says that they really don't want me up there. Just, you know, I said I find that incre incredulous. Because you used to play that uh, club four weeks a year. And yeah, sold out every show, and for probably made years. more money than anybody who would play that club. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't pay uh, you know uh, Bill Burr that kind of money there. Yeah. Uh, because he would pack the joint, and you know the attendant booze that was served out. But uh, well, he's, you know, so he's such he, a great he, comic. God, he just feels that there's nothing out there for him, and I, I kind of had to agree with it. You know, he says they all they want are young comics who work cheap. 
You know, so it's, it's sad. It's really sad. I know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really sad when Alex Bennett can't get a job in the radio business. Yeah. That is sad, yeah. Oh, and I go, I, I still be great. I, you know, I, I, you think up to up to a point. I think people knew who I was. I think if I go into a radio station now and say, "I'm Alex Bennett," hey, 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 they, <laughs> uh, how do you spell that? You know, they don't care. They don't care. So you know. I, I don't know if people under thirty even know what radio is. Oh, and then they want to pay you like bupkis. You know, they're not. The trouble is now. They're not really paying talent what they what they're worth, no. uh, you know. Uh, and in your case, for instance, do you find that you're being paid less by some clubs than you used to get paid? Uh, but you're getting paid the same as you were literally thirty years ago. So yeah, with inflation, you're getting a lot less. So it's the same as thirty years ago. Yeah. They, yeah. The clubs didn't. They pay the opener, the middle, the same as they were thirty years ago. Well, can you give me an example of that? Like, well, a middle act would get a hundred dollars a set back in a set. nineteen eighty nine, so, and it's still the same. So, if you did two shows, you get two hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay, that's as a middle act, and you're usually a middle act, right? Yeah, I never liked headline answers. No, headlining's a whole oh. different story, right? Yeah. You let somebody else take that pressure. Yeah. Or or let them try and follow you. That's, that's yeah. another pressure. But um and, and how much does the opener get? Opener gets fifty. Fifty. And the headliner then would get whatever he could negotiate. Yeah, the headliners uh would get Back in the eighties, I remember the punchline. That some of them were getting twenty five hundred a week, which was pretty good money then. I think Slayton at one point was making about four thousand a week at the punchline. Uh, I think he was making more than that. But yeah. he, yeah, he could pack the joint. Yeah. So you know, but I mean, just every profession. I wonder out there if I were to talk to like you know, a non union welder, you know, how much he gets. It's probably crap. Yeah. You, nobody wants to pay money for people to do work for them. You know? And if you're not willing to pay the big bucks, then there are going to be people there who are going to take the lesser bucks. Yeah, and that's why you got so many crappy comics that'll do anything for all virtually free. So. Well, I look, I look at the landscape of radio, and quite frankly, I you know, anytime I've turned it on, which is infrequently... Uh, the people suck. They just absolutely suck. You know, and... Um, oh. What? Yeah, it's, I listen to radio here. The local radio is just really lame. So. Yeah, I mean, and, and they have... Uh, and, and on top of that, in most cases, they're not even in the city you're listening to them in. You know. No, we've got... Uh, Let's see. KGO has uh, Mark Thompson from L.A. He's, yeah, but he's he, a weatherman here. He, he's, he's got a show in the morning. Yeah, he's he's but he's on. He, he literally isn't in San Francisco. No, no. You know, and no wonder that station's number thirty in the market, because if they had somebody local, they might do better because that person then relates to the area. You know, um, uh, it always bothered me. I always had an argument about syndication years ago and that the problem with syndication was is that I always say there's something about your audience responding to somebody who is in the same temperature that you are yeah okay so say like today in New York it's going to be uh, it's going to be 90 degrees it's going to be hot okay if I went on did a live show I would kind of have that you don't even have to say I'm in 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 New York but if I know it's hot outside, and I've been outside and it's been hot, and now I come in and I'm doing a radio show, that kind of telegraphs itself to the audience. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah or something that's going on locally, you can relate to that. Yeah, exactly, and, and local stuff and so on and so forth. But if you're sitting down in L.A. and you're trying to do a show for San Francisco, it just it doesn't, it doesn't play. No, it doesn't and, play. And that's why KGO is number 30. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they used to be the number one station in San Francisco, by the way, folks. 
Forever. by far for like 35 years they were number one okay uh, you, in fact the ratings would come in and you'd go who's number two you yeah. know because you already knew who number one was going to be all of a sudden they changed the rating systems and one thing and another and now they're number 30 in the market and you go whoa wow how the mighty hath fallen mm-hmm. do you remember me I used to have troubles with KGO because I couldn't have a guest on on my show in the morning if they didn't get them first. Okay, they wouldn't yeah. book them. If they came to do my show, they would not book them. If they weren't on my show after they were on KGO. All right? Well, the problem mm-hmm. with that is in the morning, KGO had a news show, so they didn't interview people. So it had to be starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. So they could go do like Ron Owen's show. But then they'd have to stay overnight in San Francisco rather than, like, at the end of the day, fly back to L.A. or whatever. So I missed out on a lot of guests because they wouldn't stick around to do my show. And uh, it was it was terrible. I thought about suing them at one point, and then I just went, eh, you know. <laughs> that's too expensive. That, that, that's, uh, being a, you don't want, want to go to court, right? No. I mean, Avoid court at all costs. Well, I, I've had people say to me, you know, if you don't do, if you don't do that, blah blah blah, blah I'm going to sue you. And you go, oh, okay, go ahead, sue me. <laughs> you know, because you're going to spend a fortune and and years in court and litigation in order to get me for like you know five hundred and sixty five dollars or whatever. Uh, you know, it, uh, you don't want to go to court. Just if you have a chance, folks, you should have watched the Amber uh, Heard uh, Johnny Depp trial, and you would see at certain points how boring and laborious a court action is. I just I went through one with this apartment for the last what nine years. Um, yeah, and it's still not really over. I mean, it's over, but it can be appealed now. And they fully intend, the landlord oh, intends wow, to appeal. Oh, really? wow, really? Yeah. Wow, God. You know, and you go, come on, you know, get this thing over with. And then it went, we, we went for, for years with one thing and another, depositions, and then uh, the one guy was complaining about this, so there had to be this action, and we had to write another $10,000 worth of briefs, and that, but that, but that. And it goes on and on and on, and then COVID hits. And we we started the trial. We actually started the trial in about, oh, I don't know, two days in, three days in, no more. You know, we're closing down the whole city. And we weren't able to get back in court for another year and a half. So it's, you don't want to go to court. You just don't want to go to court. It's not worth your while or your time. And it's never as dramatic as Perry Mason. It, it never gets that way. It's actually very boring, isn't it, most Oh, it's, it, half of it is objections. You know, if you watch the herd uh, Depp thing, it, 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 they go objection, and then they walk up to the judge. It was called a side uh, board or something like that. And sidebar. Sidebar. And uh, they do the sidebar, and then they sit there talking to the... Uh, and I always was like, when we were sitting here watching, it was having fun putting in the dialogue about what they were talking about. And uh, I would do things like... Uh, so, Judge, you know any good places to get uh, lunch here? Because uh, <laughs> we have a we have a break coming up. Well, yeah, there's a place down the street. They're really good. Oh, they're, you got to try their pasta. And then they go back. <laughs> you know? I mean, I, who knows what they're talking about? But it happened constantly. I mean, it's it's just you don't you ne- do not want to go to court, folks. You really don't. It's not exciting. It is the most boring. You know, we went through depositions, and then we went through this, and we went through that before we ever got to trial. You know. It's always expensive. It's always expensive. It wound up costing us uh, about $110,000, something like that. Jesus. Yeah, over 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 10 years. But uh, that's still it's a lot of money. Who wants to spend that kind of money? Anyway, so I... Don't, who wants to spend money on an air conditioner? I think that's where we started with this discussion, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> you know. So anyway, I'm getting it on uh, on Friday, and 
Hopefully, we'll you be. You can't live in New York without AC. Oh Jesus! I mean, I, that's that's why I, I didn't go. Oh well, let's take the. It'll be here in two weeks from Amazon. You know, because we don't know what the weather's going to be like. We have an air conditioner in the guest room that works, and one in the office that works, but we don't want to sit in here to watch television at night. So, anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. We have. Let's do this again next week, okay? We're, we've run out of time like Ray Liotta. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Larry. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's Larry. Let me turn on the lights here. There we go. Ah, I didn't have the lights on, huh? Huh? Didn't have the lights on. Didn't have the lights on. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, yes, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about all this stuff that's happening today and so on in a couple of minutes, but we have a whole bunch of people who are ready and willing to be part of this futile exercise that we go through every single night. Uh, I brightened up my lights a little bit, so now I'm feeling the glare of it, but anyway, we'll survive anyway. Let me just uh, bring these people in, what people are here. There's not a lot of them to begin with, but you never know, you never know, you never know. Okay, there they are, ladies and gentlemen. There's Jeff, and there's Brian, and there's Josh. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. Yes. Uh, hello there. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Hello, Josh. I, hey, Josh, I got to apologize to you for what went on last night. You know, oh, at, well, the end of the show, and you finally just, you know, didn't you got sick of being interrupted while you were trying to talk by Phil, and I hear he wrote you and apologized. Well, he sent a line that just said sorry. I guess I guess I interrupted you like three times or something. Yeah. I didn't write anything back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, today <laughs> today he wrote me. And told me now that he's going to give his support to Biden. Uh, I know this sounds amazing, okay. uh, but his. Uh, let me just read this thing here because it's kind of interesting coming from him. You know, uh, let me see here. Where are we? I, uh, come on, where was it? Oh, here it was. Okay, uh, he he, uh, he said um, um, he said basically wrote it's a little long i've been thinking about biden and how the country is so divided since a majority of people voted for him i feel i should not sabotage his efforts with division i don't want to be uh that guy that put so much hate and caused trump and caused trump to have issues leading the country i supported trump's agenda although i did not feel biden uh I don't feel Biden is taking the country in the right direction. This is the direction that people voted for. So why should I create any negative energy for our leader? And I'm not going to fight his positions. I'm only going to hope that someone with his uh, with the ideals that I support is elected next time. But it's not positive or productive to have so much negativity around the leader of our country. He should be allowed to lead doesn't sound like phil does it no no but mess some like some of us voted for biden because he would be the only one to beat trump and then some of us aren't happy with what he's doing now so if phil wants to jump on the bad biden bandwagon some of us want to get off it right now so yeah well no i don't think he's saying he's getting on the biden bandwagon but he's not going to going to attack him you know that he feels but that, now, but now some of us are attacking him for not doing anything. So, it, it, <laughs> like well, Bill always behind. Well, I mean, but there is a difference between. I wouldn't say that we're attacking him. Some of us, you might just be voicing your displeasure, or non-approval for an idea that he had, or something like that. But you know, what's well, gotten out of hand, and look, it got out of hand with Trump too. But I didn't come on here and do it. Is the you know. Oh, well, his mental capacity, his faculties, and his stamina, I mean, the nonsense that has really nothing to do with, with, with anything. Well, I mean, I don't, care. I don't care if the president is bedridden, if he can perform the duties 
then he can eat it right? What does it Well, matter? I mean, if, if you look at the past, uh, we had, for instance, uh, 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 Franklin Roosevelt, who was oh, right. uh, really incapacitated. People didn't know how much he was in a wheelchair. They hid that. You know, they had, in fact, here at the Waldorf Astoria, they had a train track that came off of them as a spur off of uh, the main railroad track. So whenever he came to town, his car could be shunted off to the side, taken to the bottom of the Waldorf Astoria, and then he would take an elevator up in his wheelchair and then secretively wheel behind the podium. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that went on for years. And nobody said, hey, he's a cripple, he can't do the job. You know? Yeah, so I mean, you know, if you don't like, you know, uh, an idea, you know, Biden wants to uh, do this or do that or whatever, I mean, that's that's fine. Well, but, I, I, you know, yeah. I, I just, and like I said, I did get tired of it with Trump, too, with, the, with his mental capacity. And then, oh, he wears an earpiece and a guy tells him what to say and, and he can't remember. I mean, okay, I mean, it's not helping. It's not getting the country anywhere forward it's all just making us go backwards it's, it's you know though, uh, though I, it does speak to one thing though josh and that is that we can't seem to find leaders that are capable of running this country you know that we 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 elect by any number of other reasons and the reason to vote for somebody i mean we just had uh, in down in uh, uh, pennsylvania uh tonight uh the guys who um gave up and and Mehmet Oz has won the nomination for the Senate uh, for the Republican Party. Now, who is Mehmet Oz? What, what is his political currency? Nothing, yes. absolutely zero. What, he was on television for nine years giving phony medical advice, and somehow he's a celebrity and everybody knows who he is, let's vote for him. Yes. You know? Well, voters have got to do a better job for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is yeah. and, now, and I was talking to somebody tonight about we seem to be going for people who are like on television or football players, uh, as in the case of what's his name? I can't forget his name. No. Oh. I gotta lock the door. Hold on. You gotta lock the door. You but. <laughs> no, I mean you're right though. We got to do. You know, I mean, a better job as voters. So I mean, yeah, but no. What like I'm saying, well, no, what, what, I, what, I, what I was saying to somebody at dinner, Josh, tonight was that that we, you know, we tend to go for people with names, you know, with name recognition, Trump, Mehmet Oz, and so on. And then I stopped to think about it, and I went, "That's nothing new," because I remember well, when right. I was growing up, we had a senator in California by the name of George Murphy, who was a song and dance man over at MGM. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then right. then Ronald Reagan got elected governor and eventually president. So I guess celebrity even paid off back then. Yeah, I mean it always has. I mean it probably always will. Prior but, to prior you know. to uh, to uh, 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 George Murphy, I can't think of very many famous people who ever ran. You know, celebrities who ran yeah. for public office. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, and I suppose the, that the modern celebrity is a little bit, you know, of a new thing, too. I mean, the, the sort of the way that we have it now, because we have a lot of connection to, you know, if, if a celebrity wants to, you can almost know where they are and what they're doing, you know, almost every day, you know, and those kinds of things. You know, yeah. so, I mean, if Phil is talking about, you know, you know, that sort of thing, you know, every time someone makes a, a, a point about... Uh, Biden or something, you know, we don't have to crack a joke about oh Hunter Biden's laptop or whatever. Good, then I'm then I welcome that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that is the only way that you're gonna fix problems. Well, there's no you question know? in my yeah. mind that we have to change the level of discourse in this country. It is it it's got to change. And you know, I've got very few. You know, I'm not I'm not that young a guy. I could go any day now. But I don't think in my lifetime I'm going to see that not happen, that we're going to continue to have these same problems, you know? Yeah. Well, I hope not. You're right. But, we, I mean, we don't, we don't really have a way of knowing. All we can do is, you know, live it. Yeah, Phil live just it. wrote in, uh, Sally Sanford was the mayor of Sausalito. Yeah, she was a, she was a madam. 
famous madam in San Francisco. So, but I don't think that becoming a city a mayor of Sausalito is necessarily a big political get. Yes. Uh, well, there was- Alan. That was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, aren't we Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Oh, yeah. So do we think, and I think this way, I think the Republican Party since Trump has turned into a cult. Well, I, I think you're right. Uh, they all seem afraid of something, some kind of mojo that Trump has. Right. And right. quite frankly, I don't think he has that cachet any longer. Although some of the people he yeah. put his name behind are winning in the yeah. 2022 thing. And so but, that's but well, then, but it's in not- some ways, in some ways, though, eventually that's not going to really be healthy for him because I suppose that any student of revolutions would understand that after a fairly short period of time, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, mm-hmm. The creators and leaders of the revolution typically get pushed aside for newer leaders of the same revolution with the same message, but people have gotten tired of the original guy. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Does that make sense? I mean, you know, at some point, pretty soon, people are probably going to say, well, if the people like his ideas, we can just take his ideas and just put them on new faces that people can't attack as much, and we can try to push our agenda that way. You know, and in a lot of ways, I would agree with them because I said before that if you liked Trump's policies, okay, fine, that's a policy uh, preference, right? And all mm-hmm. Americans are entitled to that. My problem was always that if there are 360 million people that live in America, for fuck's sake, you couldn't find one other that had those same ideas that wasn't one of the lowest forms of human beings we've ever. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't find one person with integrity to, to just say the same things except say them in a way that wasn't hateful and mean and sometimes just downright stupid. And, and you couldn't try to get your policy ideas pushed by that person. You know, you had to find this person to do it. You know, I, that's what I always had more of a problem with than I did so much his policies. I mean, if these are his policies and this is what he believes, well, then he should say it. Well, because I, that's I, I think there was a definite problem in my estimation. Um, I don't know that Phil would agree with this particularly or, or a Trump person, <clears throat> but I feel that Donald Trump didn't have any politics. I don't think he had anything he believed in. I, I, did anybody ever get a feeling that he believed in anything in particular? No. No. Himself. Himself, yeah. But I mean, it, I, it, you never got, I never got the feeling that he was passionate about anything. You know, at least, you know, Biden, for all his faults, at least cares about the country and would like to do right by it. I just think that perhaps he's incapable <clears throat> of it. You know? Yeah. I mean, he at least has a long record of what he says and well I, I don't know that I've always that I've ever really liked Biden I mean ever since the thing that went on with what's her name years ago uh, in the Clarence Thomas hearings uh, I, I I really didn't like the way he treated her at the time and always had a very negative feeling about Joe Biden uh, so you know uh, I, and and I don't think it changes that much now except here's what I, here's what bothers me. It, it is obvious to me and to anybody that watches him that Joe Biden is, uh, to a certain level, doddering. He hid it while he was running for office. He tried to have as much energy as was humanly possible while he was running. And then once he won, all of a sudden, he becomes a little more doddering. You know, his eyes are like slits. Um, he stumbles a lot because he always had a stutter but it's more pronounced now than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And this is not the kind of person really that should win an election, okay? But he looked good when he was running for office. So that that, that was kind of the audition. Well, now he's not that way and that may hurt the Democrats' chances of winning in the fall, taking the, you you know, having the Senate in our pocket and and the Congress and so on. And it's all because of his approval rating, which is based upon 
his public uh, image. Uh, and 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 I think that if he cared, if, if he cared about this country and cared about the Democratic Party, he would have never run in the first place, you know, because he just wasn't up to the task physically, all right? Uh, but no, he runs because he's got to win. He wants to be president. And that's a selfish reason. You and know. we're probably lucky anybody but Trump right now with COVID and stuff like that. Well, this was definitely anybody but. Right. You know, I mean, I don't know that if there was a better candidate that the Republicans had that I wouldn't have voted Republican, but they never come up with one. Mitt Romney? Mitt yeah, Mitt Romney's got his set of problems too, you know. All politicians do, I think. Well, not all politicians. You know, I think that we would have. It's funny. I saw. I was watching an interview with uh, Ricky Gervais on Letterman. I think it was. It was the first time he was ever on there. He'd just been a hit over with the uh, with the Office in England, and it was coming over here. And uh, one of the statements he made was, he says, the difference between the United States and Britain is, he says, in the United States, you tell any kid that if he studies enough and he works hard enough, he can become president of the United States. And in England, we say the same thing about the prime minister, except if you're lucky, you won't have to do that. <laughs> You know, that, that nobody thinks about, I'm going to grow up and be prime minister. People go, why do you want to do that? <laughs> you know, that's strange. Here, everybody wants to be president. You know, we, we know that Trump did it for ego reasons, and I think Biden did it for ego reasons, too. Otherwise, he would have said, hey, you know, like he did a couple of years back, I'm a little too old for this. Maybe we should have some younger guy running. You know, what the, what the Democrats need now is another Obama is what they need. Yes, Ray. Yeah, when I, I spent an entire summer in England, and they have happened to be going through their elections at the time, and I think I know why. There is nothing uh, there is nothing elevated about becoming a politician in England. It's like yeah, working yeah, that's, class. that's what he was it's like working class stuff. Yeah, yeah that's what it's he like was. That's what he implied. Yeah, yeah, yeah because they had they ha they have their royalty already. So the president, our president, is treated like royalty. They're, they have their six weeks of campaigning. They they run around in sweaty t-shirts and it's it's there's nothing uh, what's the word um, uh, highbrow about it at all. Right, right. Yeah, it's not something you'd want want to aspire to, unless you really felt like you needed it for some weird reason. Yeah. 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 The other thing about Trump is, uh, if I can remember correctly, when he first was talking about running, he wasn't even sure which party he was going to run in. He just wanted to figure out which one he thought he could win with. Yeah. So, yeah. like, he didn't really have any ideals or anything. It was just like, a, which party is going to let me win? And then he well, would have just well, said whatever he had Well, on the other hand, to. I don't know that he ever expected to win. I don't know. No, I don't so. think so. You know, and, and when he did, I, I suppose he looked at uh, one of the people around him and went, Oh fuck! Now what do we do? I mean, yeah. he's he's given to the Democratic uh, candidate for the past thirty years. You know, uh, every Democratic president that I mean, you know, that ran, they gave to Obama, Obama and Clinton, and and then all of a sudden he changes to being a, a Republican, which of course he isn't, and uh, because that's like you said, Alex. I think it's because he he thought that's the only group that he could win in. Yep. Yeah, well, well, he won for them. You know, he just couldn't hold on to it. That's all. Well, you know. we might see him again in twenty twenty. Well, you say we're going to see him again, and I don't think so. You know, I, I, th you know, America has just short memory, and their memory is getting shorter where Donald Trump is concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, people who a year ago went, "Oh, gee, I wish we had Trump in here," but they go, "Well, yeah, where's Trump these days? Who else do? Who else I hope do we?" You're have? Right. Who else I hope do we they have? forget who he is. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and and there may be a lot more dirt by then too, that makes him unelectable. Hopefully, yeah. the problem is Trump is a master at manipulating the the news cycle and a master at getting attention and a master at 
you know, reviving that spark. I that, don't know that he was know, a master. Sure. I think that he was, if he was anything, he's a con man and he knows how to bilk somebody. And what he That's did, what, I mean, yeah. what he did was he bilked the press into giving him a lot of free publicity. You yeah. know, all he made sure was that every day he said something ridiculous that they would yell and scream about. And I got to say, if anybody was responsible for the election of Donald Trump in this country, it was MSNBC and CNN. Because they every day were outraged about Donald Trump, outraged about Donald Trump. I would be surprised if that wasn't the most inexpensive uh, campaign for president ever. Because where do you have to spend money? He was getting all this free publicity. Meanwhile, you know, Hillary's going, look at me, look at me, look at me. Nah, she, say something mm. ridiculous, then we'll follow you. So, I mean, they were responsible for Donald Trump's election. He had Donald a great Trump. skill at, at lying. He had a great skill at lying. Uh, well, not really, because we caught him in the lies. That is not yeah, a great didn't, skill. Didn't bother the great skill is to lie and get away with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, but every time he, he would say, I didn't say that, you know, 17 different stations had him on film saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, or something, yeah. So. Now, here's something for you. Uh, uh, why do we give you a bad time about Alan? About who? But what do we give you a bad time about when you do it? I don't know what. When you're eating. Yeah, I'm not eating. That's though. what I'm doing. Look at Ray. I know. <laughs> I keep on trying Brian, to get my face. Out of Brian's me. eating too. So, uh, you know. Now I forgive. I forgive Brian because he's having one of those keto bars, and Marjorie and I have a keto bar I, every gonna, night I'm that we share. I'm gonna get some of those next week, and every night I'm gonna eat one on the show. But this is my fourth one tonight. This is my fourth one tonight. They're really good, aren't I they? I felt bad until I saw Brian doing it, and then I said, oh, I guess it's okay. No, so mine's okay. Mine's approved by Alex. It's uh, 100, yeah, 180 calories. Okay. Yeah, two carbs. Two carbs. Wow. Two carbs. Yeah. So, yeah. That's pretty 180 good. calories. Is that the ice cream or the chocolate? Yeah. I'll tell you what happened today to me. I got we got our new uh, we got our new um, um, air conditioner installed. Yeah. So, it, the new one comes with Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I you know, I, if I were just an average person, there is nothing there that made it easy to get the Wi-Fi up and running. It was just terrible. Uh, the Wi-Fi. Uh, Our new appliance is Wi-Fi. Everything has Wi-Fi. The the advertisement I heard on the on the radio for Wi-Fi is that they that you can tell or the the dishwasher will tell you when the load is done. It is really wow. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't know I, how I could do without that. <laughs> I needed to know why when my dishwasher is done. Well, this yeah. thing, this thing, you know, I now can use um, uh, Alexa. To turn it on and off and set the temperature, which is it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice because I can also do this long distance. So let's say I'm out and it's a hot day and I'm coming yep. home and I want the air conditioner on by the time I get home. I can turn it on right. using my 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 iPhone. But good. to get this thing to work took me a couple of hours because there were all kinds of problems with it. Um, I won't even tell you one of them. But when I finally got it, so it was recognizing it and, and had attached itself somehow, to get to all the other stuff was Im, Im, Im really ridiculous. And I don't know, because I, it's an LG, and my LG oven was very simple to do. You just went to the QR code, and that set the whole thing up. But they don't gotta, have it on this thing. You gotta be careful with all that Wi-Fi stuff. You gotta make sure between you and your dishwasher or your new air conditioner, Jeff's not standing there, so his Wi-Fi heart doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah. Well, his heart valve. Yeah, his is <laughs> his doesn't have Wi-Fi though. Oh, good. Does it? No, Jeff? actually, my uh, base maker yeah. is connected through right. my telephone. Okay, yeah. okay. So it's not Wi-Fi. Not <laughs> Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth, I think. <laughs> The concept is that that it automatically uh, sends information to the cardiologist 
through their system at Yale. Yeah. I didn't know. I mean, I just I did just threw that out there. Sorry. Jeff. Yeah. So what, can, what, who, what? Do you know any kind of celebrity? Maybe we can run for president on the Democratic ticket. Oh my my friend! I told you my friend's running for president on the Libertarian Party. Yeah, but he's not a celebrity. He is with me. He's very famous with me. <laughs> okay, he's very famous with you. Uh, uh, anybody come to mind? I can't think of him. You know, Bobby Slayton. I was just gonna say Bobby Slayton. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I don't know if they'll, the, I don't know if they'll get anybody to do it. Every joke against women and the yeah, that's. Mm. Not. Yeah, they would. They would have a lot of, of stuff. They would have a lot of stuff to get on him, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, I, but you know something, in the old days, certain people couldn't couldn't run for president because they had too much baggage. I mean, there was some kind of baggage, for instance, that Mario Cuomo had, uh, that made him not run a run for president. We don't know what that baggage was. It may have been some mobbed up relatives or something we don't know you know but he didn't run because he didn't want the heat uh and yet today if you think about it you can be the biggest scumbag on the face of the earth and call women and say you get to you know pat them on the pussy or whatever and you get you get elected president this doesn't this doesn't hold you back in fact supposedly trump was having meet, frantic meetings after they, uh, that Access Hollywood tape came out. Uh, and uh, what should he do? How, what kind of spin should we put on? Shall I, shall I not decide not to run what? And they said, I ah, keep going. He kept going. That thing, we talk about America having a short memory. Boy, that was the shortest memory in history. Uh, I'll talk about with the hooker. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the porn star, with uh, what's her name? Oh well, that was a Stormy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stormy, Stormy Daniels. Daniels. And there was another woman he paid off too. The uh, playmate. Yeah. Yeah, there were two of them. She yeah. was she was pretty gorgeous. Yeah, she was nice. Yeah, she but I mean the other uh, one. Yeah. None of this stopped Trump. So if that did, that no. didn't stop him, what is it going to stop anybody? If if the public somehow has is enamored with you, they're enamored with you, and that's it. They'll forgive anything. Remember Gary Hart? Gary Hart got, like had to stop running because of the picture on the monkey business with the the boat, the monkey business. Yeah, and there's some woman, name. some woman with him. Yeah, sitting on his lap on a yeah. boat. That's yeah. the end of his presidential run. Yeah, sitting on his lap. That's how how yeah. terrible it was. Yeah. You know, it was the guy who who he was leading the polls at the very first couple of states. Was not Huckabee. No, it's one of those guys, and he he started young. Oh, that was. Yeah, I remember that. That, yeah, that canceled him. What was that guy's name? Uh, uh, shoot. Do you remember who he was? Anybody here? Howard Dean. Bro. Howard Dean. Howard Dean. Yeah, yeah Howard you know, Dean. you know what? I gotta, t I gotta tell you about that. Why that was horrible. Uh, that killed the election for him. By the way, it did. Yeah. You know. Uh, but it wasn't that terrible. The problem was. And I learned this a long time ago when I was doing shows with a live studio audience and we'd go to the punchline and we'd have comedians do their acts. And the first time I listened to a tape of it, I said, it's not coming across funny because I can't hear the audience, okay? So I then had them put microphones pointing out to the audience so they could balance those against the comedian and all of a sudden the shows came alive. Well, what happened to Howard Dean was he did this thing, and it would have worked if you could have heard the reaction of the crowd. Uh, but yeah. you couldn't because there were no mics on the crowd, so he just sounded like he was going crazy <laughs> up there going, ah, ah, ah. So that's what, that's what killed him, you know. It's kind well, of... Well, I mean, that you know, was my earlier point with Trump, was the Republican Party was pretty much, you know, the original drivers of certain baggage, you know, should eliminate you from public office. I mean, I understand that they they always cry that, you know, liberals have all these litmus tests or whatever and you know, and perhaps they do or are too picky, but I I mean the uh, 
the conservatives or you know the Republican Party when they really got themselves in bed with the, the Christian right and everything mm -hmm. you know that is when they really started all this if you've got any baggage you are you're, you're disqualified you know but like I said but they were perfectly willing to set that stuff aside for Trump I mean I remember you know not that long ago I mean even just maybe it's been less than 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, because I live fairly close and I'm I listen to a radio station that covers that media market I mean I remember crying or listening to Republicans cry about they just couldn't believe that Ashley Judd could want to run for senator in Kentucky because she'd been naked in the movies before I mean how, how could you ever want a, a woman to, to be your US senator that was willing to take her clothes off for money I mean I remember that that it, was how really far gone? I mean that I don't remember that, I don't remember how far that we've traveled since then right I do remember that I, I mean, think I, I listened to her on, on uh, NPR right <clears> after <throat> that whole thing happened in an interview, and she was she was confounded as well. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I mean, how far yeah. have we come? Have we come since then? You know, I mean, I mean, but you know, Trump came along, and they were willing to. They realized that they had a chance of getting things that they wanted out of it, so they were willing to set aside their principles then to get what they wanted in that. You know, that's what bothers me. That's when I start having problems with people, you know, or parties or politicians or whatever is when, you know, all of a sudden you're willing to set aside everything that you believe in just to get what you want. You know, that's, I don't think you can see, I don't think you can trust a person like that. You know, to me, like those are the things that I look for, you know, when I would decide, you know, who I wanted to vote for or who should lead the party or whatever. And when I see someone like that, that that's the worst quality in a person, if you ask me. I mean, well, I'll tell you, a, you know, you want to know the best quality I've seen in years was Obama. Obama was what I called, when he ran, I called him the stealth candidate. You know, he was everything you wanted in a candidate, except for one thing. He was good looking. He didn't have any dirt on him. Hell, if he cheated, man, she would have kicked his balls in. Okay? <laughs> um uh, it, it, good family, all those things. That nobody had any dirt on Obama. The most they could get on him was he smoked pot in college. You know? In fact, he sold it, actually. So, but, I mean, we just... Uh, you know, I but, mean, we but, all lived through the vilification in the 90s of Bill Clinton for womanizing reasons. and But, but the very same people that vilified him with megaphones... I know voted for Trump. Yeah. I mean, Trump is not a moral person. I mean, again, if you like these policies and all that, it's fine. I'm not talking about that. But, I mean, it's obviously pretty clear that he's not a moral person when it comes to marriage and woman. I mean, it's it's just that it, the evidence is I don't even think his supporters would disagree about it. They just said, but we don't care. Here's the interesting no. thing, though. Here's, okay. Here's the interesting thing. You know what has changed in the last 50, maybe 75 years, mm. is that in the old days, you could cheat. You could do all kinds of things like that. And the press knew it, but they didn't report it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Franklin Roosevelt had a mistress for most of his time in office. Okay? Mm. The press knew it. But what it was considered was you didn't report that because that was personal stuff. And that was between him and his mistress. Today, how long do you think Franklin Roosevelt would have lasted with these reporters? Yeah, I mean... About a minute be, and a half. Yeah, right, I mean, that's... You know, I don't remember all the facts, but... I, I You know, because we mentioned it a minute ago, I think that was sort of Gary Hart's point, too, was that, if I remember right, he was... I'm pretty sure in a marriage where they had an agreement, you know, I, I think his wife knew or understood or, I mean, maybe you know, so an open marriage, okay? Which, look, there are people in this country that are in that. And I think his point was that has nothing to do with well, my ability the, to the argument, serve as president yeah, of the United the States. The argument is if his wife doesn't yeah. mind, then you have no right to, right? right? And, if, and if I remember right, I, I think that was the situation of his marriage. I think she had a problem with the fact that it embarrassed him, okay? I can get that, you know, but I don't, I, but I... Well, I here, you know, you know what Hillary Clinton you know? was pissed off about 
wasn't the fact that Bill was cheating on her because, you know, she was doing the same right. thing, okay? That's not what bothered her. What bothered her is well, he got caught. Well. Okay, you can do yeah. it, Bill, just don't get caught. Well, because it was taken up as a, as a, as a tool to use to bring down his, or to attempt to bring down his presidency. You know where? I mean, you, I mean, you that's know, what I was saying about the Trump deal. I don't care that you said he's a womanizer, but 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 we don't care. My point was, but that's not what you said 15 minutes ago. <laughs> but but was the great thing about Bill Clinton was he could compartmentalize, and yeah. and he could uh, have them coming at him from this direction with Monica Lewinsky and all of that, and on this side he has the left brain. Uh, he could uh, do all the stuff, the work he had to do, and push it through and get it done. He had he he was he was very dexterous when it came to. So I'm know. I'm I'm certainly not trying to argue that ambidextrous. You know, we should just completely overlook any you know character, moral and character issues and all that. I'm just saying, you know, I think it's okay to have certain things that you might not agree with. I just. And pushing for a little bit more of the focus to be on focusing on the person's policies and beliefs and all that and setting aside to go back to what we talked about at the very beginning the the ridiculous nonsense that is not going to help solve a single yeah. you know i mean if you want to just sit around and you know make stupid jokes about the earpiece the joe biden wears or whatever that's not going to stop any eight-year-old from getting shot next week Which, it's, wait, okay? wait, wait, it's not What's with Ray? Don't know. Uh, uh, there you go, Ray. Oh, you didn't want people to see you eating. <clears throat> what is what is, what is that you've got in your gob? I was trying to be polite. Oh, it's pizza. <laughs> oh, oh, pizza. Pizza, okay. oh, man. Pizza and beer. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just... Uh, but zero it's, a, it's the world we live in. I mean, zero alcohol. Yeah. They knew, for instance, uh, the press knew. I, I as me being kind of part of the press at the time, knew uh, the women who Jack Kennedy was having sex with. You know, um, it, he had one woman who was a regular British actress uh, by the name of um, name started with a G. I'm trying to remember her full name. It'll come back to me in a couple of minutes. Everybody <clears throat> knew he was sleeping with her. The press, but the unwritten rule was. You don't report that. That's not the kind of thing you report. It's not proper to report mm -hmm. a president who's cheating. Do you think Kennedy would have gotten away with that today? Glennis Johns, oh, no. that was the actress, Glennis Johns. If, if they knew that uh, you know Kennedy was uh, stooping Glennis Johns and they could get the <laughs> scoop today, they'd do it, you know? In those days, you didn't do that, you know? that. That was family, <laughs> you know. You kept that. Don't like that. that in France. In France, they don't. It's right. Just up to the, as long as the person's doing their job, no one ever cares about. And you would think in life. France they'd want to, you know. Well, it's just like they there. It's like they always say, "Say no matter." You know, that's what that's what men do, or whatever. Well, you know, the one I loved was uh, Berlusconi in Italy. Yeah. I mean, this guy with his ba bunga bunga parties. Do you remember that whole deal? That guy was wild. Yeah, and he just said, sure, yeah. I'm having my bunga bunga party. Screw you. Yeah. And, you know, the Italians go, hey, it's, his, it's, his, it's the way he lives. You know, that's his, exactly. which not not mm -hmm. our business. As long as he, exactly but he did, the same in France. But he wasn't a particularly good prime minister either, so they, they booted no. him. You know, but, uh, you know what was it? There was one other thing I wanted to bring up today that I then I and I you know I, I say I'm going to bring things up and then I forget them completely. I should I'm getting to the point in my life I never used to have to write things down, and now I should write these things down so I know when to bring them up. Um, but this was something about eh, what was it? Eh, I'm still having another problem with Channel 13. I told you about this last night. PBS again. I can't get my passport shows. All of a sudden, I can't get the passport shows. You know, they've stolen my 60 bucks under false pretenses. PBS. Profit-bearing system. I don't know. You know, screw them. And like live on the five days, you said to watch Channel 9 and never give anything to them? 
You, you encourage people to watch that and not donate? To, to not donate? <clears throat> yeah, I think <clears throat> Live in the Five Days, you said, because they weren't paying for any of those programs or something. Maybe it wasn't, live, uh, maybe it wasn't uh, Channel 9, but one of those... That kept asking for more money. You'd say, "Well, just watch them and don't give them a dime." Because well, what gonna... happened was, yeah. what happened was, I ran for the board of directors at KQED, and uh, uh, you know the fix was in though. They, it was they, those elections were definitely fixed at KQED. So I didn't win. So while that was going on, I was saying, "If I don't win, <laughs> don't send the money anymore." <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, it was. I remember that. Yeah, but that was a that was a. I learned a big lesson there. That that whole thing was fixed, and it, uh, I was not. There's no way they were going to let me win that election, in spite of the fact that I would have been good for them. But see, what happened was here was a station, Channel Nine in San Francisco. You know, these come, come every every three four times a year. They come to you with hat in hand and say, won't you please give us money? A penny would be fine. A dollar would be nicer. 5,000 would be great, you know. But, I mean, they're always begging for money. And so you go, oh, they're so poverty stricken, they have to watch for out for every penny. Well, they had this big, beautiful studio. It was in a giant, I don't know what the thing had been, like an airplane hangar or something, I don't know. It was on Ninth Street in San Francisco. And it was gore it was a big it, it, they had the largest sound stage in northern california that they could rent out and everything it was a, no they wanted new studios so they spent hundreds of millions of dollars to build a new studio a new offices and studios when they didn't need them you know my idea is if you're if you're a public broadcast station you do it on the cheap, man. If you can find the cheapest the accommodations, that's where you go. So you can pump all your money into programming and stuff like that. Instead, no, they went and built and then sold the uh, sold the old building. Uh, you know, which wasn't really worth a lot. It was just a great studio for doing TV out of. And so I complained about that. I said this was a real lapse of faith with the public. What was wrong with you having to be in that old building? Because it wasn't pretty, you know. I mean, I said if you're if you're public broadcasting, you know, if you're a network, you go for the optics, okay? You want the nice building so you can show everybody what a wonderful network you are and how high, you know. But if you're PBS, man, you almost want to look poor, you know. And so I. When I ran for the board of directors, one of the things I said was, we don't need this new building. The old one is suiting us just fine. You know, so it was, and, and one time I, um, I, I went in there to do some recording and I said to the people at KQED, you know, you would think again, PBS, smaller station, runs a little bit on the cheap, I'm sitting there, I had never been sat there for a long period of time, and watched people walk in and out, and finally I walked up to the receptionist, and I said, how many people work here? I mean, are on salary here? She said, 300. I said, 300? I said, all the TV stations in San Francisco combined don't have that many people working for them. <coughs> you know? So that was what I ran on, and I lost. <laughs> okay? That we, we were just going to... Be be humble. That's nothing more. So that was my that was my big life at KQED. But anyway, so um, there was some. There's one other thing I wanted to talk about, and I couldn't. I can't remember now. Hello, Tony. How you doing? How, how you doing? How you doing? How's your prostate? Still there. It's still there. I, you know, just everything. I'm just waiting to hear from the doctor. No, nothing big. Just two little tests. Waiting to hear from the doctor? Yeah, I'm. You know, then he'll set up the appointment. I, I, set I'm, up an appointment for what? What? Yeah. Well, I don't want to talk about my health. It's nothing big. It's the oncologist in uh, in like June or July. Oncologist. So what I want to do? Yeah, if I want to radiate in the office, it's no big thing. He said, "This guy's making it sound like it's nothing now. Like we could just watch it." My sister's like, "No, we're not watching it." I said, "I don't want to take up the show on my podcast." I, right I don't understand if you had a, a three and three which is the best possible outcome for yeah. cancer. 
why they want to do anything. It's usually wait and watch. I know, but I don't. I can tell you offline. He, I, it's either that or I can radiate. My sister would rather have me radiate to do something. I may do treatment, but I'm not. I'm not going to bother you guys with it. I could wait and watch too. So, but she wants me to radiate. You know, in the office stuff. So I'll, I'll see what happens. The worst part about getting radiated is they make you drink a lot of water before they do it, and hold okay. it, and hold it. Well, the best part, I w when I had mine, okay, I, one day I go in, I have to go in, you have to drink like six glasses of water because that's to make your bladder full so they get a better radiation in there or whatever. I don't know what the reason is. So I, I go and I drink my water like I'm supposed to, and then I put on the little robe and everything, and I go in, I lie down on the gurney, and they're, they're moving this thing around, and they're looking at me, and they're doing CT scans and everything. <laughs> Then through the speaker they say, "Could you get up and empty a little bit of your bladder?" Oh God, this is where I got to look. Now I don't know if you've ever done this, folks, but filled your bladder full of water and then emptied just a little bit of it. Would <laughs> be hard to do. Hard to stop. Yeah. It. They said if you can't do it, then get rid of it all and then drink it again, and we'll wait. Uh, and I went, "Yeah, I got things to do today." So I went in and I peed. Yeah just a little bit enough and I went back and laid under there and they said perfect you know but I mean I had I had a, huh That's torture it was kind of torture but mm -hmm. you know I mean it's 60 seconds I mean we really didn't get into it busy. yeah but otherwise radiation is kind of fun the machine is your friend it's kind of like your little robot pal that keeps passing by you every now and then my sister's in the office like, you should have said, we'll do it. Like, calm down, man. It's like, all right, we got time. He says, you don't have to jump on it right now. Brian will like this. Today I did an interview, oddly enough, on Zoom. Uh, it seems as though the Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame. Oh, you're getting in? Is, I, I, am, I am in. I've been well, in for right. years and well, years and years. Now, yeah. So but they finally decided they're going to make uh, 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 KMEL, which is long gone. It's a radio station. KMEL, the legendary station of the year for the Hall of Fame. For the Hall of Fame. Oh, great. And so they interviewed me about my time there. And the guy who interviewed me was Brian Cooley, who was my program director at CNET. Yeah. Brian and, Cooley, and yeah. I hadn't talked, Cooley, I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't talked to Cooley in... Coon's age, as they say, and and um, he's been there twenty three years. And wow. Chuck, Chuck Farnham replied to one one of a, uh, the Monday shows or something like that. I don't know if you saw. He put a post in there about one of the shows. Oh really? I remember Chuck Farnham from Live One Hundred Five Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, so that uh, that was kind of fun to kind of catch up with uh, with uh, with an old program director. Yeah, that, uh, wow. uh, from days of yore. Yeah. Uh, right. How many here good. Uh, from the Bay Area remember KMEL? Mm -hmm. You remember yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. The camel. Yep. Yeah. They had the camel on the the stickers and everything. Oh yeah. It's a good station. Yeah. I listened to it. I listened to you in the morning, and then I listened to the music all day. They, they had a logo. <laughs> they had a logo that was the the camel. Right. It yeah. was done by Victor Moscoso. Hmm. Yep. Who is my what first Dennis. cousin my first cousin's husband Tony. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah that was that right yeah I did a lot of posters too didn't he? yeah oh, a good yeah. logo yeah yeah you know, good concert. logo very memorable yeah, yeah. concert posters yeah. yeah i did concert posters and uh <laughs> i used to have a little business with him in that i distributed his posters but this yeah. was before anybody bought posters and so when I would try and sell them somewhere, people would go, "What are people? What are people going to want to buy a poster for?" They're and now those posters, now. posters are worth a fortune. They are. They're worth a fortune now. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't get rid of them. We were selling them at, you know. And uh, the other guy, Mouse, he used to. Uh, Mouse, Stanley him. Mouse. Yep. And the other guy was uh, the big one the was guy. Wes. I'm trying to remember uh, his name. Yeah, uh, what was his name? Wes. Wes. You know what I was gonna ask? First name was Wes, right? Am I thinking yeah. right? Yeah. Can't remember. Wes Montgomery? No. No. Wes something or other. Anyway, there were three oh, big there, there were three big artists at the time that did the posters for like the uh, Fillmore, 
the yeah. Family Dog, and the other club was the Matrix. Boy, how do I, I remember this? I wasn't even there when these places were open. You know, I've got a couple of them. Oh, there you go. There you go. Here we go. Show and tell now on the program. Hold them up to the camera. Hard to read. Hold them up. Hold them up to the camera. Let's see. There's a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. That those are who did those? That that's. Um, I can't. Uh, this is the family dog one. Okay, then those were probably probably. I can't uh, read them because I don't have my glasses. It, you say there was Muscosi. Kelly. Huh? Kelly. 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 Ah, okay. I always wondered how they. I have one. Put those over there. Yeah, yeah. And the other one. But. <laughs> you know what I was going to say? Like those move those posters. I always wondered, like, say the bands. Does the band tell them what to draw? Or no, 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 no. Like? No, what happened was is that the way these posters came to be was these clubs started running music, right? Oh. Fillmore, The Matrix, and The Family Dog. And uh, they needed to advertise, and the best place to advertise wasn't in newspapers because they couldn't afford it. So they, they, they made posters and hung them up on uh, telephone poles. And they, they, because the, it was the psychedelic era and because the music was so out there, the, the, the more convoluted these, you almost had to be high to read what it said on the posters. Yeah. Yeah, it would be all curvy. And, yeah, they said. And they'd put like 50 of them around the pole. They would they'd create like this font wallpaper. where, where, the, where the, the letters floated into each other. And you'd have to yeah. like really get high in acid or something to look at them and go, oh, yeah. Janis Joplin's at the Family Dog. Okay, <laughs> you know. My ex-brother-in-law collects them, and he's got them all over the place, and they're originals. They're probably worth a fortune. Oh yeah. They, they grade those Alex CGC now. They grade movies. Yeah. Uh, uh, constantly. Sure. They grade they anything. Were... They would grade my <laughs> sperm if it were available. They probably would. Where did Alex's yeah. sperm get yeah. into the thing? It's a CGC eight on my movie. <laughs> Yeah. Alex, I got fifteen hundred dollars for your sperm. <laughs> you, get, you get the ones that are black light lit. <laughs> oh yeah, they were. All, they were all uh, uh, look good under black light. Yeah. So what you would the do is you would the hang purple. them up on your walls, and then you would go out yeah. and buy a black light. Really? Yeah. Right. No, no self-respecting like bathroom, a uh, bedroom rather, of a single guy in those days came yeah. without a black light. Yeah, and you paint the walls green. And yeah. Yeah. Really fucked you up. I used to <laughs> lay in bed. I used to lay in bed at night and turn the light on and just like look at them. Yeah. Now let me bring up <laughs> and something. And then I put these stars on those. Let me let me stars. bring up a, a, a something before you guys leave me and some of you actually float over to Jack's show. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got a note tonight from Jack, and he said to me. Uh, I'm getting, I don't know what to do. I'm getting hell from my audience because I'm not on YouTube. Boom. He, he, and, and he, uh, uh, no, but then we're, I'm not on YouTube. Huh. And he said, I, I, they, some of the people said they're just not going to call anymore if they're not on YouTube. Has that been going on on his show? Does anybody know? I haven't heard that. That's the first I heard of it. And I wrote him back and I said, tell them to go fuck themselves. Yeah. You know. I don't think... I mean, it kind of came up last night, but we didn't say anything. All we said was, oh, Alex... I said, I said, I think Alex is the only one on YouTube. I think that's all I said. Well, the reason I'm on YouTube... But I didn't I'm, say anything. I'd put him on YouTube tomorrow if I felt he could handle it. Yeah. But, you know, it, it takes enough just to get the show on the air and audio... To get it on in video, he's got to put in switching equipment. He's got to have a better uh -huh. camera. He's got to learn how to how to set the whole thing. It's just not too do, much. It's it. not doable. It's a lot of work. It's a it's lot of work. Yeah. Now he yeah. he wanted to go to maybe to Zoom. That I can I can work out for him. You know. But yeah, it, please, I, I can't log on to his show. I can't even hear a show. I don't know. What do you mean you I can't log on? I think Zoom would be good. The, the Skype is, the quality of Skype is much worse than, than yeah. the email. But to all you people, yeah. if the, if any of you were telling him that you wouldn't ever do the show again unless he was on Zoom, please don't encourage him. You, yeah. I don't think we said that. Yeah. I know I didn't say that. I never, I never heard anybody say that. No, okay. Yeah. Uh, what we, Not anybody on the show. What, you're complaining maybe that it wasn't on Zoom? Nope. 
don't care. No, no. All I, not anymore. I used a little to. bit. We were talking about YouTube, and I said, I all I said was, I think Alex is the only one on YouTube. I think that's all I said. Yeah. I mean, I could sim- we, yeah. if he wanted to do it in a simple way, I could have him Zoom, and I could teach him on Zoom how to send the picture <laughs> over to YouTube. You know. That that could be a, a way of doing it, you know. But uh, when you people encourage that, that it's just are going to be hours of me trying to teach him mm. how to do video. And uh, God knows, I've, I've got him doing the audio okay now, you know. Yeah, that's going to wipe out a, another year of your life. <laughs> exactly. I, I wouldn't do you it. You don't have much left. Do it. Only five hours. To do it the way you're doing is not easy. There, oh, yeah. there are too many okay. things I had to do to get this set up. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it's incredible what you've done because I kind of have a feeling for what it was, and I, I know. It's oh, how I'm getting using OBS. And- there is no program that automatically takes Zoom and puts it over here. Although I could, on in Zoom, you can go directly onto YouTube. Yeah. But doing it you the way I do. You don't have control over the. No, but what I have is I literally have the this video you're seeing of the panel in Zoom is uh, something which I am taking as a cutout from from Zoom. See, if I take my, my cursor and I put it over here, see, you suddenly see that actually things can get in the way of it. So you gotta be really careful, you know. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But, he's, on, he's on Skype? Huh? He's on Skype? He does yeah, Skype. Skype. Okay. But, but Skype doesn't have a direct use. It, it, Skype he could do, Onto video nope. too, but it would take too much to do that. You know, how, how are you guys getting on his show? You yeah. call the Skype the old Skype number that's been there forever. On the Gabnet page. Uh, it's I don't Gab, know. I it's Gab, Skype it's, and it's it, sitting there. It's, no, Gab, just, it's I, Gabnet I, I Live. It's, it's, it, it's Gabnet Live. Oh, Gabnet. The, fo- the phone number doesn't work anymore. That that, uh, that that I did away with years ago. I always have a problem with using Skype. It took me months to get on the show with Skype. Really? Yeah, well, you know, Microsoft kept before they would let me get on. You're like, who was your girlfriend in the third grade? Oh, yeah, I you know, hate that. <laughs> you know, all this, all Mike, this you know, crap that, what has this got to do with Skype? Well, when they yeah. say, who's your, who, who's your girlfriend in the Skype. third grade, just write in Amber Heard. You know, oh, I have Skype for business. I'll, I'll try to log on tonight. By the way, uh, the joke I pulled, I think last night, is, it should be attributed to somebody else. I'm trying to remember his name. Oh right. yeah, what did he buy? He said he used my joke on the air. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, he look. says I heard you did. Well, why don't you call in then? Steve you Hartley. Have so many jokes. Steve Hartley. It's his joke. Yeah, where he. Yeah, but he, if he's got jokes, why doesn't he call in? But he wrote. He wrote. Uh, basically, he set it up. He said that. Uh, Johnny Depp is the first guy in America to have true herd immunity. So, ah. uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a good joke. It, uh, good definitely, good oh, it's a I thought good. you came up with it last night, Alex. No, 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 no. Oh, I hadn't heard it elsewhere. No, no. I, I don't think I tried to put it as being that way, but yeah, I did. Anyway, there's the theme. Wow. Been a nice night tonight. Mm-hmm. Not as fun filled and full of action as the end of last night's program, which left me completely depressed as I went out of here and uh, <laughs> profusely. In California, wanted... go vote. Yeah. Yeah, vote, vote, vote. Oh, you yeah, got an elec- election going on. Vote. Four days of that coming up. Vote. Yeah. Vote, vote. vote on time and vote often. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, we have one, two, we have man. one, two, three. Yeah, four people here who in California. It's like a California show, for crying out loud. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Another great week of you being here. Same thing yeah. to you, Brian. That's I think you've been here almost every night. Tonight, the Warriors must have not been playing. But, uh, yeah. They're gonna Sunday. Be- Sunday. They need to realign. Sunday. Okay. And, uh, Josh, good to see you here again. Uh, and tonight, you got your chops in, you know. Uh, and and uh, uh, Alan, thank you. Thank you to uh, Ray, and thanks, of course, always to Kevin. And finally, to the lovely and attractive, and he doesn't know what the hell to do with his prostate, uh, <laughs> uh, Tony Magno. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there we go. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He uh, he takes your calls on Skype, and the address for that is GabNet Live. Okay, GabNet Live. So just you know, type that in there, and you'll be good to go to talk to him. Uh, I'll see you again on Monday with our Monday pop-up on uh, Facebook at, uh, what is it, uh, yeah, 4 o'clock. And then we'll see you again next Wednesday right here. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.